This is a revision video on monoclonal antibodies and in this video we're looking at the lateral flow test. So the common example is the pregnancy test but more recently we're familiar with the lateral flow test as a diagnosis for COVID-19. So there are two revision tasks here. Uh, pause and complete those and then we will go through the answers. Okay, so I'm giving an example of a uh, test, uh, a pregnancy test here. That's the common example. So the combination of mobile and immobile monoclonal antibodies. So there are three uh, monoclonal antibodies here. The first one is at the start of the test. They're the mobile monoclonal antibodies and they bind the antigen and the key thing here is they're linked to coloured particles. The second is the test strip and that's the immobile monoclonal antibodies and again they're specific for the antigen and then finally there is a control strip and they again are immobile monoclonal antibodies, they are specific for the mobile antibody, so they'll bind to the mobile antibody. Okay, so the second question, how does a positive test differ to a negative test? So to answer this, let's have a look at how the lateral flow test works. So at the start of the test, uh, at the start end, a sample will be added, so that can be all sorts. So in the pregnancy test, it's a urine sample. In the COVID-19 test, it's a, it's a saliva sample or actually uh, cells from the uh, tonsils and, and uh, nose. And within that sample, there will be an antigen. So in the case of the pregnancy test, it's HCG. And that will be absorbed onto an absorbent uh, material at the start of the test strip. So that antigen will be there. It will then move along the test strip towards the mobile monoclonal antibody. And when it reaches that monoclonal antibody, it can bind. And the next step is that that mobile monoclonal antibody in combination with the antigen if it is present, can then also move along that absorbent material, a wick along, and it will eventually get to the test strip. So remember the immobile monoclonal antibodies at the test strip are specific for the antigen. So if the antigen is bound to the mobile monoclonal antibodies, then it can also bind. So what will happen is the mobile antibody will be stopped there if it's bound to the antigen because the antigen binds to the immobile monoclonal antibody. And that will be seen as a line and the test strip. So that will show a positive result. There will be an excess of mobile antibodies though. So some of those mobile antibodies won't be bound to antigen and won't bind to the test strip. They will continue along to move along and they'll eventually reach the control strip. And because those antibodies at the control strip bind to the mobile antibody, they will bind. And that will show that the test has been successful. So you always need to have a line at the control strip to know that the test is valid. So that's a positive test. What about a negative test? How is that different? Well, the only difference is that there will be no antigen or very little antigen in the sample. So no antigen will have bound to the mobile antibody. So no mobile antibody can then form a complex with the immobile monoclonal antibody. So you don't get um, a line at the test strip because that mobile antibody linked to the colored particle doesn't bind. You just get a control line. So that's a negative test. 
Okay, so that's how lateral flow tests work and how monoclonal antibodies in uh, lateral flow tests are used.